I got something special for you guys today. The Minolta CLE. Spoiler alert, I'm in love with this little camera. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Shoots with Coops. And this is it guys, the Minolta CLE. This is, this is the camera that you've been looking for. If you want a rangefinder camera with M-mount lenses, but you don't want a Leica or you can't afford a Leica and you don't want a Voigtlander Besser, this is for you guys. And this is probably for most people to be perfectly honest. I absolutely love this little camera guys. So let's talk a little bit about it. So the, the brief history guys, as a lot of you probably know, we had the Leica CL that came out in the 70s, a partner, partnership between Minolta and Leica. Uh, Minolta manufactured the cameras and it was Leica branded. It was Leica glass, um, a compact version, much similar same size uh, to the CLE. Um, and uh, it was you know, very popular. It cannibalized Leica sales when it came out. Uh, it came with three dedicated lenses, um, which corresponding had the three dedicated frame lines in the camera. There was the 28 2.8 lens, uh, the 40mm f2, which is what I have here, and a 90mm f2. And they were, you know, fantastic lenses. It was like a glass, um, the Leica formula, you know, they were, they were fantastic lenses. And like I said, it became so popular that they started to cannibalize Leica M system sales. So in the end, Leica abandoned and scrapped it. But later on guys, you know, Minolta being the ones who built the camera, they came out with the CLE. Now, this camera is an improved version, a much improved version of the Leica CL. And the lenses that came with it guys, even though they are Minolta branded, they are just, they are Leica lenses. They are, you know, glass for glass Leica lenses. This essentially here is a 40mm Summicron lens. And spoiler alert guys, I mean, it is possibly the cheapest Leica lens you can get. This 40mm, uh, is the cheapest lens you're gonna get for a Leica, um, and it is fantastic. I mean, to be perfectly honest, this lens is so good, it makes me wanna go and buy a 35, an old 35mm Summicron because the, the, the color saturation, the pop, the sharpness, um, the look, everything I get from this lens has been fantastic and I am in love with shooting it. I also think on a side note that 40mm may be the best focal length ever. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm in love with 40mm. I think it's fantastic and being that, you know, this camera only has 28, 40 and 90mm frame lines, uh, I think that, you know, if you want a camera, you know, an M mount camera that's going to shoot 40mm, um, this could be perfect for you as well. Now guys, this camera is so small, it literally fits. Even with the lens, it fits into my pocket. I mean, it looks like there's a camera in there, but it fits in my pocket. It weighs practically nothing, guys. Um, you know, it is a mixture of hard plastic. Well, mostly hard plastic. It's not a solid metal build like the Leicas. The lens is completely metal. Um, and the lens mount is completely metal on the camera, but it still is really, really well built. Um, and I don't have any issues with it. I can't seeing it, you know, just break or fall apart unless I drop it myself and smash it. Can't see anything going wrong with this camera. Now, the major features of this of this camera, guys, um, you know, it, it, same as most Leicas, we have a thousandth of a second max shutter. Um, we have aperture priority, which is great. Uh, we have two stops of exposure compensation either side. We have a built-in light meter. Um, we have a self-timer, and that is it. Uh, one note I should say about the meter, guys, is it is actually a through the lens through well through the lens metering system. So unlike with a Leica, you've got you know you got your your light meter, you got the patch, this patch on the far hand um, side which you know, measures the light when actually measuring through the lens on a rangefinder, as you know. The Minolta does actually do through the lens metering, um, so you can get a little bit more accurate with it, I find. Now, the major downside of this camera, guys, and there is only one, um, and it, it drives me nuts, but there's a workaround. The light meter only lights up on this camera when you are in aperture priority mode. So when you've got aperture priority, um, it doesn't matter if you're within the, um, it works within the exposure compensation of plus or minus two stops. But without it being in there, you know, you can't just leave the camera on a shutter speed and it won't work. It's a pain in the ass. I'm literally forever finding myself, you know, I've put it in aperture priority, I check the light and then I'm, you know, dialing the shutter speed in manually and then taking the photo. 
only because the one little quirk I found with this camera, guys, is that let's say you're metering the scene and the light meter is, is the two LEDs are floating over two shutter speeds. Let's say it's, it's between 1 25th of a second and 60th of a second. Um, and it's floating between there because it's you know really close to either of those. Um, the camera seems to automatically go for the slower shutter speed, so you know it will pick 60th of a second, which is cool, except if you're in a scene where, you know, like the meter might drop to a 15th of a second, or you know, or you might try to beat your out of 15th of a second, you know, and you're really steady read to hand hold it, but it will drop to an eighth of a second and you'll have a blurry shot. So that's the only pain I found with the with the mode, but as far as exposure, you know, exposing correctly, it does a fantastic job, I haven't had any dramas whatsoever. Now guys, one other thing I love about this camera is the film loading system. I can't crack the back door now because there's a roll in there still. Uh, it is much like an SLR. You pop down your film, uh, film lever and you click it. Um, sorry, your film rewind lever, you pop it and it will swing the back door open. So it's a really, really easy um, system like most SLRs and very familiar to a lot of people to load this camera. Another cool thing about this camera, guys, is that uh, the meter, the way it works is just when your finger is pressed on the shutter button there, uh, it's like touch sensitive. So as soon as you touch it, it engages the light meter for the camera, which is really, really cool. Um, you do need to have the camera obviously switched to the on setting. Um, when it's in the middle here, it is off and doesn't matter if you have a um, frame cocked, uh, it won't shoot because it's electronic, which some people don't like, but hey, I'm coming from a Leica M7, which is electronic as well, so it doesn't bug me. But when the camera is switched to the on mode, uh, simple touch on the top of the button will engage the light meter um, and the batteries turn themselves off. Like the camera turns itself off after a little while so you don't have to worry about draining the batteries if you left the camera on. It turns itself off, which helps save a bit of battery power. There's not much else to say about this camera, guys, otherwise, other than it is an absolute joy to shoot. Just the fact that it is so small, lightweight, and compact, and then you literally got a Summicron lens. You got a 40mm Summicron that's designed for the camera. Um, and it is amazing. It's just seriously, the lens pops. I mean, even if you're not into film, guys, I would buy this lens just to mount it on a mirrorless camera. If you're a Sony shooter, I mean, I, I use it with an adapter on my Fuji, um, and I get wicked results on the X-Pro2 using this lens. Um, it ends up being like a 60 mil equivalent, um, which is kind of cool, a little bit further than 50, but you know, not as long as 85. So it's kind of a cool focal length when you're working on APS-C. But um, if you're on a full frame mirrorless as well, I reckon it's such a sick lens that I, I would buy it. I would buy it. Even if I you know, wasn't into shooting film, I would buy just the lens to put on my mirrorless camera. It's that good for the price you can get it at. All right, guys, so I hit you with a few of my favorite photos I've taken with this bad boy so far so you can judge the quality for yourself. So guys, if you can pick one of these up, uh, chances are you're gonna have to look at eBay. I did, I got this for $1,000 from Japan off eBay with the lens, mint condition, um, you know, light seals are all perfect, not a scratch on the camera, the lens is immaculate. So I'm you know, pretty comfortable paying a thousand bucks. Essentially, it's it's a Summicron lens. Any really expensive Leica lens is gonna cost you thousands of dollars. But you're getting this bad boy for a third of the price because it says Minolta on it, but it's actually a Leica lens. And you're getting a wicked range finder body to go with it. So for a thousand bucks, you cannot go wrong. You get you completely into the range finder system um, without spending all that money on a Leica. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. As always, happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next one.